Penny Dreadful. I know, new series, I'm like behind on things I already do, but I want to watch the show and I'm like super behind. So I did this show on a binge watch last season, so hopefully I just get caught up really quickly because I might be forgetting stuff. But this is episode one of season two of Penny Dreadful. It's entitled Fresh Hell, Let's Do It. How do I want all of your clothes? Hot Topic released a clothing line for Penny Dreadful and it was like not up to snuff with the stuff she's wearing. That is creepy. They just jump right in this season, don't they? So does he turn all wolfy, but like still keep the shape of a man? Because his clothes are never ripped off. He doesn't go full wolf, does he? You killed like everyone. How come there isn't more blood on him? Who's attacking your horsies? That is terrifying. Oh god, no. I forgot how creepy this show was. <laughs> it, they look like war boys from Mad Max. And there's more than one of them? No. Where is your gun? You're supposed to always have a gun. Did they leave? They just tipped the carriage over and left? Oh, no, they're back. Good lord. <laughs> What's happening? I'm gonna need someone to translate that for me. I think she just said, go away, scary vampire, and he's like, fine. Oh, they killed the horsies. Killed the carriage guy. That's one thing. But horsies, that's not cool. Oh my gosh, it's like Mystique from the X-Men. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, shenanigans. I think Frankenstein is so cute in a weird way. Like in a boyish, kind of murderous, kind of playing god, scientist, doctor kind of way. They're just gonna leave her in a bunch of water? What if the storm is like two weeks away? That girl's gonna rot. What is Dr. Frankenstein? Without his it's true. No one could care about the guy. So is this like once upon a time they're all gonna realize they're part of storybooks? Goodbye, Mr. Chandler. Goodbye, Mr. Chandler. I'm just gonna go hug myself in front of the fireplace. He's such a werewolf. He's literally sitting on her front porch like a watchdog. You stay in London. That's such a rich person thing to say. It's like, instead of saying go sleep on the couch, she's like, I'll stay here, you go live in London at your other fancy house. In the olden days, there was no Craigslist. If you wanted a job, you just had to go look in storefronts. That seems like a lot of work. You know, if freak shows were a thriving thing, he could totally join one of those. You are already the monster of Frankenstein, and you want to go work in a wax museum? That's going to make you creepier. Oh my gosh, he is going to join a freak show. He is old Jack himself. Jack the Ripper! Why do I like him so much? People just hired you without even knowing your name back then. The Mariners in Massacre. Ripped straight from the headlines much. Thank goodness for chamber pots, am I right? Seriously, how long is she gonna sit in that tub of water? That's gonna get nasty. People rot. If she jumps out of that tub and settles me, I swear to God. Don't don't go poking at a dead girl's booby. You're better than that, Dr. Frankenstein. You know, you have the face of someone that could totally have a blind girlfriend. I'm just saying. Never mind, she wants to touch her face. Never mind. I don't think that should be a privilege reserved just for the blind. Like, as soon as I meet someone, I want to be like, can I touch your face? Those in the service of the demon are irrevocably marked. War boys from Wasteland, right? What were they? Oh my gosh, how many times do they have to ask you, Vanessa, what were the women? What the heck? Don't bathe in blood. That's nasty. And you put your cigarette out in the blood you were bathing in? Double nasty. How the heck you wash all that blood off? These witches got, like, the weave game down. Their hair looks great. You're interrupting. They were having a moment. I saw that coming. It was too good of a speech to not slit someone's throat at the end of it. And I need one of those rings with the little tiny blades in them. Ooh, it's storm time. She gonna come to life now? Throw the third switch. Not the third switch. You know it'd suck if Dr. Frankenstein lived in a place that didn't have a whole lot of lightning storms? How did he do all of this by himself twice? Between the two of them, they're like barely getting stuff done. Why do you have all of your electrical stuff like in the pouring rain? Like, put the switches and the levers outside of the rainy area. Come on. It's like you're surprised that electricity didn't do well with, like, a torrential downpour falling on it. 
Please have her hand shakily grab the side of the tank. Yes! That's the only way to do it! Ah, uh, she lives. It's alive! Vanessa, you need more stuff in your room. Like, you have two candlesticks, a bed, and a crucifix. Get a TV. Ew, ew, don't cut yourself, that's gross! And maybe trying to draw satanic symbols in front of a crucifix when you're trying to ward off the devil isn't a great idea. But your finger painting game is on point. Who's gonna clean that scorpion up? Not you! Does everyone just play with blood? I can't take you serious when you're like praying to Satan with crossed eyes. Oh my gosh, I look like the Slenderman were behind her and it freaked me out for a second. Okay, either it was mannequins, Slenderman, or War Boys from Mad Max, and only one of those is cool. Dude, this show, man. I remember it was really dark, but my goodness. Also, my Dorian Gray boy wasn't there. What's that about? It opens, and Vanessa's walking through the snow, and then this witch lady starts saying stuff, and she starts seeing stuff and freaks out and falls down, and someone tries to help her, and she's like, N -n -n no. Ethan Chandler wakes up, and he's in the bar, and he's like, wait, well, everybody's dead. Oh, I did it again. So Ethan goes and meets up with Vanessa, and he's like, I need to talk to you. And she's like, once around the park, carriage driver. Once around the carriage, Ethan's like, I, I gotta leave. I gotta, I gotta go. She's like, why? And he's like, I black out, and then I wake up, and there's blood everywhere and dead people. It's, it's upsetting. Then they get attacked by three mannequin-looking naked war boys from Mad Max. It's, it's weird. The three chicks, like, push the carriage over, and then it seems all quiet for a while, and then, like, one of them pops their head in, and they all look in, and they start saying things in weird languages, and then Vanessa stands up and says some more stuff in weird languages, and then they just leave. Vanessa and Ethan pop out of the carriage, and they're looking around, and the three, like, witchy, semi vampire but witchy kind of chicks are over there, and then they kind of, like, do that mystique thing from X-Men, and then they just turn into, like, normal-looking chicks with cool cloaks, and they just walk away. Meanwhile, Frankenstein and his monster dump Brona into this weird bath, and they're like, we just gotta wait for a storm. Hope she doesn't rot in the meantime. His monster dude, John, is like, okay, well, I'm gonna go find a job in the meantime. And he's like, wait, 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 once I do this, once I bring her back to life, you're, you're gonna leave me alone, right? He's like, no, we're bros for life. Right there. And Frankenstein's like, oh, crap. Ethan takes Vanessa back home, and he tells me, and he's like, Hey, um, watch her all night. I'm gonna just go sit on the porch all night like the dog I am. Vanessa's like, there's no helping me. The past is coming back or something. Malcolm meets with his wife and they're standing over the grave of the, you know, the daughter he shot. His wife's like, listen, I was never really happy and you keep, you know, killing all of our kids. So now that we don't have any more, you go live in London. I'm gonna stay living at home. Thanks. Okay. Frankenstein's monster dude keeps going, like, door to door, and no one seems to have a job, and finally he finds one at this, like, curiosity place, which is just perfect for him. So it's a wax museum, and they're introducing, like, new famous murder scenes, so it's, like, right up his alley. The guy shows him around, and is like, just come back later, I'll introduce you to the wife, see if she likes you, and see if you got the job. Meanwhile, there's an investigator guy, and he's looking over the crime scene at the bar, you know, where Ethan killed everyone. And the guy's gotta be, like, Sherlock or something, because he's like, wait, there was a survivor. This is a new murderer. And I'm like, you got all that? There's just blood and tables knocked over. Meanwhile, Vanessa's just hanging out in her room, chain smoking. Ethan's like, wow, this really shook her up. I've never seen her like this agitated. And this chick has been through some stuff. Frankenstein is hanging out at his lab and he starts talking to Brona, who's like in the bath. And uh, then he starts touching her boobie and it got weird. Then he gets interrupted because there's a knock at his door and it's me and he's like, hey, um, you, sh you probably should come with me. And John is going to meet up at the wax museum guy's house with his wife. And she's like, well, you got the job. It pays nothing, but good luck. They're like, hey, we should introduce him to our daughter. And she comes in and she's blind. She touches his face and she's like, whatever, it's a face. His wife is like, why are you hiring that dude? He's going to run off all the customers. And he's like, that dude is going to bring in the customers. I mean, we're pretty much a freak show. Back at Malcolm's place, everyone's just gathered around Vanessa and Frankenstein's like checking her heart rate and stuff. Everyone's like, how can we help you? And she's like, no, it's fine. And at that point, it felt a lot like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She's like, oh yeah, by the way, those people are like witchy people and they were speaking some weird dead language which was like the Fall of Eden type language. And then they were like, well, how did you know it? She's like, I don't know. I just said the stuff and they left. And then there's this really cool like long shot around a hallway that leads up to this chick bathing in blood. She's like the lead witchy chick and she was putting out her cigarette in the bathtub of blood and I'm like, that's doubly gross. And the lead witchy chick, of course, is the one that was from the seance in the last season. She comes down, she's talking to all of her, like, daughter-like girls, but they're pretty close. 
They talk about trying to get Vanessa and failing, and they're like, well, she's got a protector guy now. She's like, we're going to have to double our efforts to get this chick now. We will outsmart them. And then this one eager chick's like, I'll get him. Don't worry, I'm great at this. And then every point the chick tries to make to, like, prove how awesome she is, she couldn't even remember what a chick said. Uh, she clearly didn't get her. You're way too eager. All of these are points against you. So the main witchy chick, she sets off on this, like, really big speech, and, like, at the end of it, she flourishes with a backhand and just slices the chick's throat. It was awesome. Later, Ethan tells Malcolm, he's like, hey, wait, you have a spare room, right? I'm moving in. Malcolm's like, uh, thanks for asking, but I guess... And then a storm picks up, so Frankenstein and John are like, oh, we can go get Brona out of the bath. They start flipping all these levers and spinning these wheels and doing every, like, trope that you ever associate with Frankenstein. Bunch of lightning, bunch of awesome. It all ends with her doing the shaky hand out of the tub and grasping the side and standing up kind of thing. It was great. And at that time, Vanessa's in her room. She puts some candles down. She stares up at her crucifix. She goes and gets a knife and just lays her freaking thumb open and then starts, like, finger painting with blood. At the same time, the witchy chick is over there, like, praying to Satan and playing with blood, too. The witch chick is like, okay, Satan, I'll go get Vanessa for you. I'm gonna make her life horrible. And then you see that Vanessa is, like, drawn out a scorpion. And then she kind of gets, like, flashes of those, like, other witchy chick, mannequin-looking chicks behind her. She turns around, they're not even there. So she's just, like, clasping her hands together, blood pouring down her arms, praying. And then credits. So that was kind of, like, a dive into the deep end for a new season. I'm excited to see where this season goes. Uh, it's, it's, again, way darker than I remember, but I do remember it being pretty awesome and dark. So if I forgot anything, or if you guys want to talk about anything, drop a comment. Don't forget to do the things. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you guys later, so until next time.